Welcome to Theory Underground. I'm your host, Dave McCarricker, and today we've got Nance here in the audience, and we're joined by the presenter of the day, Swole Terry. Welcome, Swole. How's it going, man? Going good. Busy day, but uh, glad to be here. Yeah, sorry to keep you waiting here. Um, so this computer didn't just break down and then I have to like reset it all up like last minute for you here. But also part of the reason uh, that I'm bringing you back now is because I also somehow lost the recording of your, uh, of your presentation when you first did this. So um, I guess without any further ado, maybe you could just tell people a little bit about what it is that you'll be doing. Um, but I'll just tell people that because we loved this presentation the first time you gave it, uh, we'd asked you to write something for underground theory. And so now you are there in the in in underground theory. Eamon, Stephen Redecki, aka the Swolitariat, uh, whose piece is called something really absurd. Let me see. Do you know do you, do you know the title off the top of your head there? Uh, the dialectics of fitness, a letter to soft bodied theory dorks. Yeah. Which would be me, which would be me. And so this is what I need to hear, but chances are there's a bunch of people who are trying to do more than jack off and eat ice cream. And so they get into educational content on YouTube, but that's not enough folks. And so put your hands together to welcome up Swolitary. He'll tell you what you got to do. Okay. Thanks guys. Um, I just want to say that, uh, it's kind of a blessing and a curse that, uh, Dave lost the original footage. Um, because I, when reading back and looking back at, uh, what I had produced, I was kind of unhappy with some of it. Some of it wasn't fleshed out as much as I'd like to. Some of the, some of it was a bit out of order in terms of the flow so uh, it's a better presentation now and it hopefully it's a bit shorter actually as well um so i guess let's dive into it i'm going to hit play on the slideshow now can everybody see that okay does it come up as the full slide i'll fix yeah. it on my end yeah okay so dialectics of fitness training for the left if you consider yourself leftist some of us don't I do. So let's start with uh, introducing myself. So who the fuck is this idiot? Um, oh, good. My notes are not showing up. That's excellent. What is going on? Oh, no, never mind. They're good. Yeah, so that's uh, that's me. And that's what fitness and strength training, which we're going to talk about, can do to you. The first guy there, that's a soft body. And the guy at the end there, that's about a year's difference. Uh, maybe even more like nine months, actually, uh, of, of a transformation just with consistency and doing all the shit I'm going to tell you about today. That is really so, good, by the way. That, that's that's the picture people go for when they start working out, I think. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you do uh, transformation photos, like if you want to do before and afters, make yourself look as stupid and ugly as possible for the first one, right? You want to look really <laughs> bad and like depressed and like your eyes are cockeyed. You just woke up. And so that when you look good at the end, it, it's the transformations that much more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like there we go. <laughs> over, like... All right. All right. So who am I? I am the Swoletariat, a.k.a. Swole, a.k.a. Eamon, a.k.a. Steven. That's my middle name I use some, I use in my business. Um, I'm a Canadian personal trainer, a gym owner, and I have eight years experience in the industry. I have a diploma in, oh, here we go, diploma in fitness and health promotion, certified personal trainer, and I am also a certified, certified glute specialist, which is, you know, very important, of course. We all want big booties and strong booties. But more importantly than all of that, my credentials are uh, a two and a half pound, two and a half plate bench press, four plate squat, a four and a half plate deadlift, and a six plate hip thrust. So you know I walk the walk. 
I am a political YouTuber and tweeter since about 2017. I am an orthodox Trotskyite with platypus characteristics and a former international Marxist tendency member. So you're going to get a bit of that, uh, you know, orthodox Marxist flavor in this presentation, whether you like it or not. And I, a uh, friend of the channel, I've known Dave since 2018 when I started engaging with him as a fellow YouTuber. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, wait. So back that's in our, a, back in our influencer days. That's right. Um, how do I hit play on this video? Yeah. So here's my squat for proof. Good. So now we know it's not fake. That was four plates on a squat, four or five pounds. So why fitness? Of all the forms of uh, self-improvement, fitness generates the greatest positive cascading effect on all other aspects of your life. It is the base from which the vast superstructure of your life activity emanates. Rather than subtracting from other possibilities, time spent on fitness adds energy to your day, organize, organization to your week, discipline, focus, stamina, confidence, self-efficacy, and the motivation to sweep away the most wasteful behaviors in your life, keeping you stagnant and unfulfilled. I'm sure you can all think of some right now. At the individual level, the prioritization of fitness is the best life hack for securing genuine time energy you never thought you had. Time energy is a social resource that affords time plus energy with the potential for, for repetition. When fitness is integrated into your lifestyle, suddenly what little time you do have is infused with energy for the, for the pursuit of more long-term projects, language skills, arts and engineering, creative things, um, breeding theory, writing critique, and organizing with others for shared goals. Dynamic bodies feed dynamic minds. By contrast, the idealists, imagining their, their minds totally detached and isolated from their physical bodies, view our fleshy vessels as primitive and inconvenient breeding and shitting machines, locked in perpetual competition with pure, unadulterated thought. Uh, but as materialists, we understand that there is no mind without a body. Uh oh. Okay, hold so on. Pause. Um, it's not showing. Working? It's sh yeah. There's two problems. One is oh, it. Oh, I see. Yeah. One is it's showing no signal for you. The other is that it's really quiet. Oh, it should be. Pl hmm. That's an audio setting issue. There's a way to. Uh, sh if you stop screen sharing for a quick sec. There's a way to, when you go back to screen share, click share audio. Okay. Uh, where is screen share? Screen share. Share sound. Okay, got it. Nice. All right, let's try this again. Um, I think I'm sharing the wrong screen though. You were sharing screen. Yeah, that's the wrong screen. What the fuck? Well, it's the, uh, if you click the little, know. uh, click the little carrot right next to share screen and just select start new share and choose dude, the right. Dude, dude, swole. Oh, our, there we go. I got it. Our, uh, our Spanish tutor suggested that all the technical difficulties we're always dealing with. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say, Nance? He, he says it's all an act. It's it's all bullshit. We're we're trolling we're people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's perform. He said that it's performance <laughs> art. <laughs> yeah. But but he said that we uh, we didn't tell Anne. So the two of us are in on it. But all the bullshit is real from Ann's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> from the whole tour. All right. Are we are we good? I think we're good, yeah. Okay. All right, let's, let's try go. this again. Lectual, spiritual shit. I don't know how to go. Okay, maybe I can go back to the there we go. All right. 
it's impossible to divorce the physical from the mental, the intellectual, the spiritual, any of these other more ephemeral aspects of human existence cannot be divorced from the physical body in which all of those things reside. Okay, so that was Mark Ripito, uh, start, uh, the originator of Starting Strength, um, the training program that we're going to be talking about later. All right, so yeah, if you let your body fall into disrepair, your mind will not be far behind. By the same token, when your mind endures degradation or some profound distress, that trauma is expressed at the cellular level, in your gut, your skin, even your DNA. Those of us blessed with an unshakable thirst for theory and thus the capacity to think through the problems of our, of our historical impasse are thereby duty bound to maintain bodies fit to guide the social transformation which history has tasked us. So, the problem, we're already starting from a dearth of time energy. So what do we need? Well, we need to skip the research and the research stage stage and where we filter through all the information that's out there. And no, <laughs> I was in the wrong order. And get the best bang for your buck. So to understand how to avoid wasting your time, we need to differentiate between training and exercise. So exercise is activity performed for the acute physiological benefits accrued during and shortly after said activity. So CrossFit, yoga, jogging, F45, Orange Theory, spin classes, recreational sports, these are all exercise. They're either random in nature or progress is not built in. Uh, exercise necessarily limits your physical transformation to a novice level. Your body composition and and fitness will improve with e with exercise, but you'll quickly reach a hard ceiling no matter how much you push yourself. Training is the process of accumulating consecutive physiological adaptations in order to produce a desired outcome, like losing 20 pounds, uh, getting a four-plate squat, or a 24-inch pythons for your biceps. Uh, the point of training is not how you feel after a workout, but what you do in that workout, which brings you closer to your goal. Every workout has a purpose, therefore, and the purpose is to push you one step further than you were last week, than where you were last week. Um, okay, that, that was wrong. So, uh, enter, so how does that all work? Well, enter dialectics. The human body, like all organisms, is at once maintaining homeostasis and constantly adapting to its environment, a unity of opposites. It does not want to change. That takes energy, but it will adapt to a new homeostasis, desired or not, if an external uh, input or stress is applied, which is... Uh, oh no, we're back there. Which is A, uh, sufficient to trigger physiological adaptation, and B, not so great that the organism is unable to fully recover and begin the process again at a new baseline. This is called the stress recovery adaptation cycle. And it is the fundamental principle of both training and basic physiology. So let's look at a case study. Um, you guys have been through this before, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, Dude, it's, goal it's to get a nice... It's, Sorry. it's all, I mean, even, even obviously there's people watching this who've never seen it before, but like, I need this refresher every bit of every little bit of it. Like I really need this kind of kick in the pants. So thank you. Well, perfect. So, so chat, those in chat and, and, and listening, just think about the, this, this case study here. So your goal is to get a nice golden brown suntan, but your starting point is, uh, let's say, I don't know, Nance in the summer or sorry, in the winter pasty. We'll assume. Um, and. Oh, no, we skipped ahead. And so so what's going to happen if you hop into the tanning bed for 20 minutes with a fresh UV uh, light bulbs in that pasty condition? Well, you're going to have a bad time. Not only will you acquire a very deep and painful burn, you won't be able to physically move for a week and you you won't be able to tan again for another two weeks. 
So the level of UV exposure needs to be proportionate to your current pastiness. So obviously you can't just go out and, uh, you know, take as much sun and UV as possible uh, right away because you're going to get burnt. It's going to be too much. So what if instead of scorching yourself, you dutifully and responsibly go outside at lunchtime every other day, lie on your back for 15 minutes, and then flip over and lie on your stomach for another 15 minutes, let's say assuming it's it's sunny every day you do this. How will you look by the end of the month? Is my question to you, you all. If you... It looked like you got enough time to spend 30 minutes outside every other day during the middle of the day. No. <laughs> how, how will your skin look? I'd imagine it would look nice and uh, scrumptiously golden brown. That's a great answer, but it is wrong. You will look the same as you did after day one. Because you did not up the uh intensity right you're you're you did not change the stress on the body beyond that first day of 15 minutes on one side fit tan 15 minutes the next side so the point is that when you if you really want the suntan you do that 15 minutes the first day two day, two days later you come back take it up to uh i don't know 16 17 18 minutes the and stress. Then, uh, right and you got to build you got to keep stressing the body but just not too much stress Oh my God. Yeah, my phone is, uh, not my phone, my camera's overheating here. So let's just turn it back on. Uh, anyway, you don't need to see my face. So what we're talking about here is the law of quantity into quality. Uh, mm. Training is therefore the self-directed application of the law of quantity, quantity into quality. Your transformation from skinny fat virgin to chiseled chad is a qualitative leap built on hundreds and thousands of small quantitative changes. So, uh, now that we've decided to train instead of exercise, what should you train? There are 10 physical traits that can all be trained. Uh, what to pick? Should you train them all? No. Your time is limited, so choose the one that develops all 10 traits at once. That being strength. Mirroring intersectional theory, conventional fitness advice treats strength as just one physical trait among many. But strength is the base that establishes the parameters for all other physical traits, which make up your physiological superstructure. <laughs> um, shoehorning Marxist language into that. Unlike other traits, the development of strength alone will simultaneously improve every other trait. Now, uh, we're not going to go over that in this version. Uh, I could I could give you studies and cite how each one gets improved, um, but my uh, lift heavy video um, we can maybe uh, link to later uh, goes over all the studies and and how this works uh, if you're interested. But let's say you're let's say you're frail as Joe Biden, you cannot meaningfully excel in any other physical trait in that state because you are not strong. Strength is the precondition for the other ones. Strength training, therefore, is the uh, is the Marxism of fitness. It's the critique of the fitness industry, the the consciousness of the fitness movement. Okay, so let's define strength training. So strength is the ability to produce, oops, produce force against external resistance. Um, we're going to be using compound movements to pull this off. For strength training, uh, that, that'll be movements that use multiple joints and muscle groups like the squat, the overhead press, the deadlift, the bench press, or the chin. It's going to be high intensity, meaning you're going to lift heavy weights relative to where you are, right? So something heavy to you is different than some something heavy to uh, somebody who's been training for 10 years, which means 80 to 100% of your max effort, which translates to a rep range of one to six. So when you're training on these programs, you're going to be doing, well, you're going to be starting at reps of five, but it could, you know, when you get more into it, it could uh, vary from anywhere from one to six reps in the strength range. Um, and that's just because of how the physiological uh, energy sy systems uh, pan out 
in in the human body. And then there's the health benefits of strength training specifically. It improves hormone regulation, your glycogen stores and regulation, um, mental clarity, energy, mood, bone density, longevity, prevents falls, uh, reduce risk of the most common diseases of capitalism. So that's why we're going to do it. Uh, it also is going to mean barbell training specifically. With barbell training and um, strength training in general, you're only going to need four to six exercises as opposed to like 40 or 50 that some bodybuilder might do or or the 100 exercises you might learn at CrossFit. These are the foundations of your training and they cover cover your whole body. It will These exercises will take you through the greatest effective range of motion. They'll use the most amount of muscle mass. They will afford you the ability to use the greatest load, thus recruiting the most available motor units in each muscle. They will expose and correct muscle imbalances sometimes. Other times you'll need to do additional work. Oh, my damn camera. I wasn't going to tell you because you were doing so good. I was on a roll. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what happens when you spend too much time at the gym and not on your computer? You know what? I was on a I was on a call right before this, so the the uh, the camera got <laughs> heated up, and so okay. uh, you know what? I'm just going to turn it off for now. Let it cool down. We'll come back go. later to my face. Yeah. Uh, where are we at here? So uh, yeah, it strength training will activate type two B muscle fibers, AKA the fast twitch muscle fibers, which remain dormant until near maximal effort has occurred. So the, your fast switch muscle fibers, they take energy. They don't, you know, they're not getting used in your day to day activity unless you really, really need them. Um, so you have to go intense in order to, to actually turn these things on. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's roughly half the body's muscle fibers that are getting neglected during me medium and low intensity muscle contractions. So we got to go ahead. Um, there's also a trickle down effect to lighter lifts and daily activities. So let's say your primary goal isn't strength, but endurance or bodybuilding. Well, strength training will actually help in these areas because uh, let's say you're a runner. Well, every stride you make because you're capable of doing so much more will be relatively easier and less effort compared to somebody who only runs um, and doesn't do the strength training. So, so each for that person, each stride represents a higher percentage of their uh, max effort. Like they're closer to their max than you are as a strong person who is running. For you, each stride is a very low percentage of your max effort. Uh, the core. It trains the core. Strength training trains the core, which is usually unnecessary um, with correct bracing and load selection. If you do it right, you don't need to train the core most of the time. And I'm going to expand on that because a lot of people really think they need to train the core first in order to, to do anything heavy. Can you not see that the process by which a 400-pound squat is acquired, develops the ability to stabilize the spine by developing all of the muscles that do so in the most functional way it is possible to imagine. That getting strong enough to stabilize the spine while pulling 500 pounds off the floor strengthens the muscles that stabilize the spine. Can you not appreciate the ability of barbell training to precisely adjust the load to the ability of the athlete as he develops his core strength. All right. Did everybody hear that? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That was again, Mark Ripito, oh, cranky old libertarian man with a lot of questionable takes, but great for strength <laughs> and fitness. Okay. Greatest training economy with barbell lifts. It's the most physical app adaptation you can get for the work done you've got limited time energy and you want to cultivate more well here it is the best bang for your buck can you not see oh <laughs> uh okay so starting strength is the specific program that we're gonna use these barbell uh, barbell training with 
Um, and that's the one developed by Mark Riptil. Uh, Because it's the most kind of scientifically based and uh, the simplest. So starting strength program, it's going to look like this. This is uh, especially the phase one there. That is what your workouts look like. It's you you can make it a little bit more um, complicated than that, but that's all you need, which seems like not much, but you'll transform your body just doing those things uh, pretty significantly if you just do only that and follow the protocol. So each workout consists of three to four barbell movements, some assortment of squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, power cleans, um, and then chin-ups later on. Personally, I replace power cleans with uh, hip thrusts, uh, chin-ups or barbell row, um, just because I'm not training athletes usually uh, or myself. Um, But why the hip thrusts? Well, that's because the glutes are the powerhouse of the body and man or woman your booty can never be too big or too strong. That's my philosophy. It's only two workouts, <laughs> alternating between workout A and workout B. It's full body. Every workout is full body. Uh, body part splits, like bodybuilders do, are inefficient unless you are a pro bodybuilder and more advanced or intermediate uh, in your fitness journey and on steroids. Otherwise, doing, let's say, a chest day Monday and then not seeing working your chest until the next Monday, you're leaving gains on the table because uh, those muscles are not being touched for a week. It's three days a week with days off in between and an extra rest day on the weekend. Nice and convenient. It's three working sets of five reps. So for so, each movement. So just Plus, to double... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Just to double check. So... When you've got too many things that you're working on, you're not able to come back to a lot of those things soon enough. And that's why you say that you're leaving gains on the table. So I'm saying you're leaving gains on the table when you do a body part split. So often you'll hear people who work out, you'll say, they'll say, oh, I'm doing back day. Oh, I'm doing leg day. Right. So when you do it that way, which, which can work for somebody who's more advanced or or intermediate um and on steroids uh that's not the best use of your your time and energy uh in at a novice stage or a beginner stage because if you do uh your your body's just not ready to to uh recover from that kind of work and um you're leaving gains on the table because let's say you do your chest day monday then, well, you, you've got a whole week to wait until the next chest day and your body has recovered from that chest day in only three or four days. So you're spending an extra three or four days not like not giving the, those muscles any stimulus. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you do full bodies three days a week, then those muscles are going to be hit and, the, and you're kind of, uh, yeah, you're not allowing them to... Uh, give them too long of a rest where to the point where they can atrophy and shrink. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so that's why full bodies are good. Uh, what is next? Oh, and yeah, they're very simple because it's three working sets of five reps each for each movement, five reps being, you know, higher intensity relative to your per- your current strength. And then uh, one to three warm-up sets, depending on where you are. Uh, and then you're going to add the protocol between workouts is you're going to add five pounds to the bar every session until you can no longer do that. So that could take two months. That could take six months. That could take a year, depending on the person. Average is probably about five or six months. Um, and those five-pound jumps, five is just the number we you, you kind of, it's the average number for everybody. But if you are a, a big boy to start, you might be doing 15 pound jumps, 20 pound jumps on your deadlift or squat. Um, if you're a 90 pound lady, you, you'll be closer to two and a half pound jumps. Sometimes I get people only jumping up one pound at a time. Um, but the point is that every time you come in, you have eaten enough and slept enough and worked hard enough in the previous workout in order to push more weight the next time. And that's, that'll last you roughly six months. 
So yeah, once you stop making progress on multiple lifts, you have completed your novice linear progression and it's time to start moving on to more complicated intermediate programs or focusing on other goals. Um, the, simplicity, the, yeah, the simplicity of the program is its biggest asset. The short workouts, constant feedback from of greater load on the bar and easy to follow instructions help keep people from losing interest or giving up early. It's exciting to be adding weight to the bar every single time. And you're like, holy crap, I'm getting legitimately stronger. Now, a lot of that is kind of neurological newbie gains. Um, but it, regardless, it's going to make you happy to get in there and, and see what you can do each time um, and pull it off, right? Um, and finally, you got to eat. Or not finally, second, third, finally. Uh, for the program to reach its full potential, you need to be in a calorie surplus. If you're already a big fat fatty, uh, you will see still see muscle growth at a reasonable calorie deficit from uh, your current maintenance, but your strength and muscle gains will hit a wall a little earlier than somebody who starts skinny and is just stuffing themselves um, to in order to gain the muscle. But you got to eat either way. And the other nice thing is that it's applicable to all fitness goals. So whatever your goal, whatever your sport, the very first priority in your training should be to take advantage of this window of newbie gains. Exhaust your potential for increasing the load on your lifts every single time you do a workout. Keep in mind that I encounter many people who have been working out for years or decades who consider themselves intermediate or advanced in some way and yet still haven't come close to exhausting their basic newbie strength potential. And if they had done that, if they had exhausted that newbie strength potential with this novice linear progression program from starting strength, then all of their other activities, their bodybuilding, their, their sports, their uh, hiking, whatever they do, would be done at a higher level. They'd be at a higher level if they they had completed this uh this novice progression. And finally, contraindications. If you have injuries, joint instability, uh, movement restrictions, muscle imbalances, back pain, etc., you may need to correct these issues before jumping into a strength plan or maybe concurrently to a strength plan. Um, or you might risk strengthening dysfunctional patterns, just making those patterns worse. On the other hand, if the movements are properly executed and coached, many of these circumstances will fix themselves in a matter of weeks. Um, I can't tell you which one that's going to be for you, um, but seeing a physiotherapist or a knowledgeable and uh, uh, massage therapist, even a chiropractor, um, should be able to to tell you. I mean, you'll, you'll know pretty quick once you get on the under the bar and test yourself. Um, whether you're having problems or not with your shoulders or your, uh, your hips or your ankles, et cetera. But some of these things, again, are fixable just by doing the exercises themselves. All right. So that takes care of the workout part. Any questions on that before I move on to nutrition? So I, I guess I just want to emphasize for people that this is sort of tailored for me even though this is obviously also i mean you have a video essay on your own channel that basically argues this in longer form but that you're tailoring it for me with and and anyone who's really into theory underground um because you're using time energy theory and it's and you're basically saying like yeah you want to get the most bang for your buck you're not trying to be a gym rat that's the main thing is like you know, yeah. looking at it, looking at Stan efforting here, it's like he's a gym rat. Uh, he lives there. Now, he's more than just a gym rat. He's also he's doing this professionally, blah, blah, blah. But also like, yeah, this is this is a response to people who don't want to be gym rats. And I think that a person who just looks at the thumbnail and then goes the other way is going to be like, oh yeah, well, whenever leftists start getting into this kind of stuff, that's where they become fascists. They just because, and because there is this uh, sort of association between uh, strength and fascism or 
between um, force and the right wing. And obviously that's why the left has always and will always continue to lose as long as that's the association. <laughs> obviously, no one's going to win anything. But um, but, I, but I'm also on the side of like not spending so much time dicking around over things like, oh, I'm going to go work out this obscure muscle, right? Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I want my body to work good enough so that I'm able to do these things that I think are more important. And so, like, there's a hierarchy of priorities here. And the body's kind of subtending most of my higher priorities. And so, like, you've really, like, found, like, the sweet spot for, like, oh, so you don't want to spend two hours a day but you want to have a good body. Um, and so I, that's what I like about it. I find it inspirational. And so um, I'm also really stoked. I've been, you know, kind of searching for like the right gym here in Boise. And I discovered, um, well, like none of them were open when I'm getting off work. I get off work between uh, 7 and 9 a.m., and most of them are opening at 10 a.m. And I was like, I mean, of course, there's like Planet Fitness. I don't care. I don't want to go to Planet Fitness. I don't like it. It's too purple. Um, <laughs> no, they, they have all these garbage machines for working out obscure muscles. You know what I mean? Like they don't have the basic set for doing these basic reps that we're talking about here. Anyway, the good news was I found out that Anytime Fitness has um, – non-staff hours which is so it is a 24-hour establishment it's just the staff hours start at 10 a.m and so there's also one right by my work so when i get off i can hit the gym then come back and then start grinding on texts and i don't even have to think about it for the rest of the day because i've done i've done the thing you know so and how long uh are you saying safely on average it takes to do um this workout on a daily basis so that's what i was just about to, to say was that uh like if we go back that's three exercises that they program here that's the the official way to do the starting strength program is three exercises that should take you no more than 45 minutes if you're quick half an hour if you're dogging it an hour uh i tend to program like this is four sorry three exercises i tend to program like four to six I, I i like i like to throw in a couple extra things um but no longer either way should be no longer than an hour hour 15 and if you're just doing the strict program 45 minutes easily and that's just going average yeah 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 i mean three exercises five reps three sets each the deadlift is only one set like yeah it could you know if you're if you're efficient if you've got energetic that day you're feeling good like yeah half an hour is not unreasonable sweet man yeah i like that and i should i guess i didn't mention warm-ups anywhere um you can do a, you know a 10 minute warm-up on your own if you know you have like aches and pains or things that need to be mobilized or stabilized uh ahead of time yeah go ahead and do that but if you're coming into this and maybe you're weak but otherwise everything's working more or less fine your warm-up is going to be the empty barbell, uh, a squat with an empty barbell. And then maybe a second warm-up, you'll do half of your working weight. Like you're just working your, way, working your way up. Your body is now ready and warmed up to do the heavy squat that you're supposed to do. Same for the press and, and the deadlift. So, um, yeah, the warm-up can be pretty short too if you're feeling good. Awesome, man. The... I, I like I like this sort of foot in the door technique here, right? Like, which is, just, I mean, it's you can always add on to it later, right? Like, you could become a person who's spending an extra forty five minutes beyond what you need to in there. But usually, I go into the gym and then I'm like, "There's too many options," and I, I I'm, I'm working out the wrong things, and so I'm stoked for this. And I, I, I guess the one thing, the other thing. When you're talking about the newbie gains, I've never had them. I've never worked out long enough to actually develop the, the to really max out my newbie gains. And I think that that's what all the 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 people who do like to go to the gym, who've ever met me, always say is like, "Oh, you've got a nice frame." They're all, <laughs> they're always looking at me like, 
you could build on that. <laughs> so I feel bad for all the people who don't get told they have a nice frame, but you know, it doesn't matter. This is just the basic workouts that everybody should do apparently. So yeah, to be honest, you, you would be a good, you'll be an efficient bench presser. I don't know yeah. how the squats and deads will go, but you'll definitely be act. The squat should be fairly easy because you have a longer torso. So, but yeah, you're, 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 you'll be an efficient bench presser. Somebody with long gangly arms will have a heart, have a harder time on bench press for sure. Oh, and, uh, and then the exercises themselves, right? Like how to perform them. Do you know if you're doing a squat or a deadlift correctly? Well, that's important. Um, I don't have the time to go over that here today, but there are very good, uh, video tutorials that you should watch and practice. Um, Dave's done, already done a, some of this, um, with the exercises, but like, uh, on the starting strength YouTube channel, yeah, there's five minute uh, how to perform a deadlift, how to perform a press, how to perform a squat, um, correctly. And yeah, get a, get a wooden dowel practice or practice with an empty bar and do your bracing um make sure you know you, you do all the cues make sure your back straight and um and then you're ready to actually put weight on the bar uh because you're not gonna if you're doing this on your own you're not gonna have a coach you don't have a personal trainer so practice yourself make sure you know what you're doing before you go because at the end of the day doing a deadlift wrong with heavy weight or a squat wrong with heavy weight you you can hurt yourself if you do it right you should be pretty safe All right, shall we move on to nutrition? Hello? Yes, okay. We're going to move on to nutrition. Uh, okay, so... All right, we got Stan Efforting here, the founder of the Vertical Diet. We're going to talk about the Vertical Diet today because I think it's the best thing, w way to eat, the most bang best bang for your buck um, for building the kind of body and mind um, that you want. So without revolutionary theory, there can be no revolutionary movement, was a quote from Lenin in what is to be done, just as correct theory is fuel for the revolution, correct nutrition is the fuel for gains. Therefore, we need a nutrition plan that is both simple and efficient. The vertical diet by the world's strongest uh, bodybuilder, Stan Effeting, is going to be uh, the way we get there. Well. Okay, so here is a visualization of the vertical diet. There's He's got a book you can order. There's a PDF um, we, we might be able to link to as well. It's a slightly older version of the, of the book, but it, it's fine. So the vertical diet is a low FODMAP diet. And low FODMAP means uh, that's for people with like IBS. So low FODMAP it, uh, cuts out the foods that are most likely to give you gas and bloating and you know gut irritation in general. Um, and so it's a variant, this is a variant of that diet. Um, and it's recommended, recommended for people with IBS, like I said, Crohn's disease and SIBO and other things. Um, but this version is optimized for performance. So it excludes the most common foods that cause digestive issues, you know, onions, garlic, uh, certain nuts and vegetables and legumes, especially. Uh, the vertical aspect refers to your staple sources of energy and muscle growth. So white rice, red meat. This is the vertical part. These are going to be the things you're going to rely on for both the muscle building and the energy. White rice for energy, red meat for uh, gains. The micronutrient category on the bottom covers the rest. Vertical diet improves on the traditional bodybuilder diet uh, of which you've probably already uh, always seen with uh, you know white rice. Um, chicken breast, white chicken breast, and like broccoli, this, which are kind of disgusting. Um, this diet improves on that by maximizing health, energy, performance, lean muscle growth, fat loss, sleep, and quality of life. Um, because you're getting all your micronutrients in this diet, whereas you're not when you stick to just, uh, you know, your, your wasteland of, tilapia, chicken breast, and white rice. The featured foods are energy and micronutrient dense. They're easily digestible. They're low in gas and bloating, 
and inflammation. The vertical diet is selective, but not restrictive. The foods pictured represent optimal choices, but other foods are not forbidden. You know, you're going to use something like the 80-20 rule, which we'll talk about in a second. So yeah, some rules of thumb. You're going to determine... Uh, oh, that's later. I just want you to know that here in this space, because we're anti-fascist, it's the 7327 rule. <laughs> right, of course. Because Nance tuned me into Pareto. Pareto, Pareto principle. Fascist. Yeah, he was a fascist, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, today we're going to celebrate Pareto. <laughs> in our rules of thumb. So, so the 80 20 rule or the whatever you whatever you could change you could adjust the numbers if you like um to stick it to pareto. Uh means 80% of your week you're going to have fairly strict diet adherence. 20% of the week so that you don't go crazy uh will be smart straying. You know, I'm not calling it cheating, but you're going to eat good foods that you like. Um, but you're not going to go crazy with it. You're going to try to factor that into um, your diet overall while keeping the protein high. Because um, again, if you if you only eat your spinach and your red peppers and your uh, red meat and your rice and uh, milk or whatever, uh, you're going to go a little crazy. And uh, we know from uh, all the psychoanalysis, uh, Lacanian psychoanalysis that we have uh, been working through and studying that uh, high, you know, restriction is the degree to which you restrict yourself and limit yourself will be the degree to which you uh, self-sabotage. The more you uh, give yourself a prison, the more you'll you'll destroy your life <laughs> when when the time comes to sabotage sabotage. You won't do it smartly, you'll do it uh, explosively. Anyway, so that that's the, a way to say to build build in a little bit of cheating into your life well, in a smart uh, way. One of the nice things about the 73 27 rule is that you get to cheat a little bit more <laughs> <laughs> that's true that is true a little bit more cheating okay oh so there we go there, there's a point i wanted to get to yeah you gotta first before you do any of this you gotta determine your calorie and macronutrient uh targets you can do that with an online calculator um last time we did this i gave a whole slide that was pretty confusing so i'm just gonna ignore all that figure that out on your own uh either with a, a trainer or an online calculator you're going to consume most of your carbohydrates around your workout to optimize both performance and recovery so by that let's say you're working out at uh 4 p.m well then you're going to have uh a big chunk of your carbs maybe a lunch at uh one at 12 or 1 p.m so that that will give you that will fill you up with energy all that rice you ate or all that potato or whatever you, you had maybe some orange juice that's going to be your energy for the workout and then after that workout you'll have your your dinner or uh whatever it is maybe a snack but with lots of carbs and that will help uh get the recovery process started on a good foot because uh you need carbs not just for energy but also recovery and uh, actually sleep as well um, a little bit of cart, like a snack, like a, a rice cake or something before bed will actually help with your sleep. Um, you're going to eliminate ultra processed foods to the best of your ability. Seed oils, sugar alcohols, anything, anything that comes in a box with ingredients that you don't understand what they mean. Um, get rid of those as much as possible. Stick to whole foods. You will limit your caffeine to caffeine intake it can block calcium absorption um and uh mess with your mess with your gut and also your mental health the plan is to the plan is designed to negate the need for caffeine so if you do this correctly you shouldn't feel like you need a coffee or multiple coffees every day every morning um because that's fake energy we want real energy that comes from within and uh on that note you're also going to try to cut out weed, alcohol, smokes, and just dumb shit in general that you know you shouldn't be doing. Um, Cocaine? Yeah, because th th okay. that's all going to get in the way of your recovery right. and uh, your ability to to perform. <laughs> I'm, and ability I'm to think clearly. Genuinely asking for a friend. Uh, I don't do coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Now people will think that I do co- I actually don't. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, take 10 minute walks after meals to level out insulin and improve digestion, mood, focus on energy, focus on energy. Uh, those 10 minutes are walks. They're also a great opportunity to get in your sunlight for the day because sunlight alone, I'm um, getting that vitamin D uh, is also a, a good mood enhancer and can actually help with the performance as well. Um, some mistaken assumptions. It's common for people, especially women to assume they need, uh, to engage in weight loss when really what they need is weight gain. Um, it's, you know, if they're not obese, if they're not really overweight, then I'll, you'll, you'll, women will come to me all the time, like pretty normal weight or, or even underweight and be like, I I just want to tone up. I want to lose some fat. It's like, no, you need to gain weight. You need to eat more than you think you do more, way more than you've been eating. And, and you, you might actually be leaner because you're eating more and you've, you're gaining muscle and you're, you've, you've now turned your body into a, uh, you know, a furnace, a fat burning machine. Anyway. So what, what ultimately it's not the number on the scale that is the thing that matters most. What matters is fitness wise is that the load on the bar is going up and that you're gaining mobility and joint stability and uh, energy, really. Um, what matters for aesthetics for both men and women is that your hip to waist ratio is improving, um, which usually means smaller waist and bigger buns, bigger booty. This was, this is also the best predictor of health outcomes, much better than your weight alone. So yeah, focus on shrink, shrinking the waist, making the booty bigger. Uh, okay. So metabolic hierarchy, this is how we're going to think about what to focus on. So humans are master neurotics and will obsess about the wrong things at every opportunity. Your nutritional focus should match the relative significance of each category. So here we have uh, calories should be your main focus, getting the right amount of calories for your goals. Uh, After that, get the right macros in, meaning uh, make sure you're getting enough protein, first of all, enough energy from your carbohydrates and fats, which will help the the body uh, keep running properly. And oh yeah, meal timing. So yeah, making sure you're not eating, you know, big meals right before bed or, um, and really that's the main one. And then, and, uh, trying to organize the bulk of your, your, uh, carb intake around your workouts. Um, and then lastly, supplement supplements. Um, I see a lot of guys who get into working out. And if they have a little bit of money to spare, the first thing they'll do is go to the supplement store and get conned into buying like every little thing um, in the store and think like, you know, this is going to be the thing that makes the difference. Well, if you have a shitty workout plan and shitty sleep and shitty uh, eating strategies, you're not going to get anywhere. Those supplements aren't going to help. Those supplements are like the little 1%. Like if you're already doing everything right, those supplements will get you, you know, that one, that 2% extra. Um, I don't know if I mentioned which ones are good. Yeah, here we go. Let's talk about supplements. Uh, okay. So I have them all listed here. Vitamin D I'd say is among my favorite, um, three, 3,000 to 6,000 IU daily is what I personally take. Um, I, it's, it seems to be the studies show that like, there's no upper limit to, um, how much vitamin D you can take. I mean, the, the bottles will say take one a day. I think you can definitely get away from, get away with and benefit from taking three caps a day, six caps a day, maybe three in the morning, three in the afternoon or two and two. Um, and that vitamin D will also help with performance. Fish oil is good because in general, most diets do not get enough omega threes. Lots of great benefits to getting enough omega threes, uh, including inflammation. Uh, creatine is the most stud- well-studied um, 
workout supplement, fitness supplement uh, in the world. And it has a, you know, definite clear benefit. Um, you will, creatine p- gets more uh, water into the muscles. So you will look, if you're leaner, and if, and if you're not, you will look fuller and uh, more muscly with creatine. It'll also improve your performance in the gym. You'll be, your sets will last a bit longer. You'll be able to push out maybe 10 reps instead of eight reps. Um, and you'll feel a little bit stronger. So yeah, there's like a five to 10% kind of gain there from taking creatine uh, five to 10 grams every day, which is uh, generally just a, one of the spoons they give you. And, um, oh, no, shakes, protein shakes. Yeah. So shakes are for fakes, uh, as Stan Efforting says. So only rely on shakes if you're poor, which is most of us, um, or in a pinch. So there's like, if you have to do shakes, do them absolutely. Cause you do want to get your protein in. If you have the ability to get your protein in through red meat and through eggs and through other sources, do that. Um, but if because life is busy and you're broke, make sure, you know, go for shakes, do shakes, get a protein isolate. Um, whey protein is the best powdered protein source. Vegan protein is okay. Uh, it's just not as easily digestible. Um, ooh, I don't know if I mentioned vegan options here. There are there are vegan strategies. But yeah, if, if you're vegan, lots of... Uh, I wouldn't go for beans maybe tofu and then yeah you're gonna have to if you're vegan you're definitely gonna have to rely more on uh protein powders and they'll be a bit more expensive but um still worth it and then uh raw ginger and raw garlic take one teaspoon of those every day for a buttload of health benefits the main one being fighting off colds and preventing colds um, I am a person who legitimately, not joking, normally gets sick about 10 times a year. In 2021 and 2022, I got sick an average of 10 times a year. I, uh, until I started taking, I got sick of it and I happened upon uh, this bodybuilder with a YouTube channel from Quebec who recommended to take a teaspoon of raw ginger and raw garlic every day. And he says it prevents colds. And so I was like, well, that's exactly what I need. So I've been trying it for the, and for the past, I think five months now, six months now, I have not had a single cold. That is insane for me. That never happens. And I deal with, you know, single or I deal with parents. I deal with people who have kids in school, um, who are sick all the time. And I have been so far so good. So seems to be working. I recommend taking that. Now he recommended, this guy recommended taking like literally just like lop off a, a, a chunk of garlic and eat a whole like raw um garlic bulb or not bulb a uh, garlic uh piece whatever they're called i don't that's gross for me i don't think i my stomach could handle that so i do uh you can buy those little mini jars of minced garlic and minced uh ginger and just take a spoon a small spoon a teaspoon of that each day and that uh, seems to work just as well the point is to not cook it it's got to be raw so and I know you can get like the, the 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 can of or the whatever it is of minced garlic. You can just get that. You can do the same thing with minced ginger. It comes like that. Yep, they should be in your grocery store, like beside each other. Not always, but often they'll be. Yeah, like small um, jars, glass jars. So usually I put them like I'll uh, I'll make a meal. Maybe I'll heat up some some rice and chicken or rice and, and meat, and and then I'll just mix a teaspoon of each of those into my rice. That's way it's, that's it's a little bit more appetizing that way. If you're in a pinch, you can literally just take the teaspoon and uh, chew on it and swallow it quickly. Not quite as good though. It's a little intense. Sounds gnarly. All right, and uh, steroids. That is a supplement. I do not recommend taking steroids. Uh, maybe your buddy takes them with a few with few side effects, but everyone reacts differently. So you, if you take them, you might go bald. You might develop minefield acne, terrible acne. Uh, you might grow bitch tits. That said, um, so yeah, probably avoid them. Um, it is worth it for males to get testosterone levels checked 
especially in this day and age. Um, average test levels have plummeted since uh, measuring began. And if you are one of the unle- unlucky Western males with below normal testosterone levels, the best thing you can do for your health, aside from getting stronger, is increase those levels with uh, testosterone replacement therapy. The thing that all those trans men are getting these days. Um, but you're going to do them for health instead. And that's only if you need it. If you're in the normal levels, don't bother. Um, if you're a woman, really don't take steroids uh, because they they basically form function as a, a, a poison to your body. Um, if you're a trans man or if you're uh, a, just a female athlete looking for you know enhanced performance, you will get that enhancement in performance short term. Um, and you might be a great bodybuilder and you might win some uh, Russian uh, Olympic medals which, uh, you know, famously happened in, I think, the seventies or eighties. Um, I can't remember what sport it was, but famously, uh, some Russian women's team, uh, were all on steroids. And, you know, if you Google it right now, they, they all ended up with like permanent, really serious side effects, um, from the testosterone and the other steroids they were taking. So yeah, do not do that. If you're a woman, especially also don't do it if you're a man. Um, Many of the the masculinizing effects are irreversible um, if you are a female. And okay, recovery is the last but not least. Recovery tends to be the piece that gets ignored the most, but is the but this is a big mistake. Inadequate recovery takes two forms: lack of sleep and too much activity. If you are sneaking in extra workouts or extra activity, you will not fully recover from your last workout. If you move apartments on your day off, or you will not recover. If you get six hours of sleep a night or less, you will not fully recover. You can't train or eat your way out of a shit sleep routine. You're better off getting a half-assed workout and a good sleep than a good workout and a shit sleep. As a personal trainer, when a client fails a set, the first questions to ask are always one. Uh oh, here we go. Our one, did you eat enough prior to the session? And two, did you sleep enough prior to the session? Most of the time, if a client missed a set, they didn't get all the reps they were supposed to. It's because of one of those two things. They they were not recovered properly. Uh, all right, let's talk about sleep and how to get it correctly. Good sleep is essential for recovery, energy, hormone regulation, and quality of life. You want to aim for eight to nine hours. People who claim they run on less sleep are uh, liars and stupid idiots in denial. Lack of sleep promotes muscle loss over fat loss um, and increases hormones uh, like ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, and cortisol, which is stress. So if you don't sleep, you're going to be grabbing for those uh, uh, shitty snacks more. Uh, Because you're going to have more cravings and you're going to be more stressed, which is going to add to your, uh, which is going to help you store fat more. Uh, So get at least 10 minutes of direct sunlight every day. That should help with your sleep as well. Do not overhydrate before bed. Stop drinking liquids three to four hours beforehand to avoid waking up to urinate. Do not eat three hours before bed. Um, Night sweats, poor insulin response are, are the, uh, can be the result of that. If you have a big meal. Uh, the last meal you eat before bed should be mostly simple carbs. Again, rice cakes, something uh, that won't fill you uh, or won't be in a, and will be easy to digest. Uh, no kids or or pets in bed. I don't care what your routine is. Your sleep is priority number one. Get those kids and pets out of your bedroom. If falling asleep is difficult, meditate before bed. I recommend using uh, Sam Harris's waking up app and it's pretty good actually despite how weird sam harris is temperature change helps the body get ready to sleep as well dude nothing about his voice is going to help me calm down (laughs) nothing i've been telling people you should read capital before bed because it's dry it's dry and it's a slog and it will take you the rest of your life to get through 
so it will definitely first of all make you fall asleep first uh, fast and then also like eventually you'll get through it because you go to sleep every night so if you actually read it before bed every night like you will get through it that's a great idea i should just replace that recommendation with read capital that's for next time Uh, temperature change helps the body get ready for sleep. So a hot bath or shower with uh, lavender especially works uh, with, with a cold bedroom. Uh, a worry journal, you can do that before bed. Getting all your thoughts out of the mind and onto paper helps uh, you know clear the mind. Do not work late and then try to go right to sleep. Your mind will race when your head hits the pillow with thinking about all the other shit. Uh, in your life that it needs to consider or worry about for the next day keep your bedroom dark consider using a sleep mask um, blackout curtains block uh, all small lights like a computer avoid screens two hours before bedtime read instead of scrolling this is where you can be reading capital consider magnesium malate or other magnesiums um, but not melatonin Sleeping pills, alcohol, weed, which impair deep REM sleep. But magnesium um, just seems to be kind of a a symptom-free way to uh, get you to sleep. Keep a regular sleep schedule and awaken naturally. Shorter sleeps can be better sometimes than longer, in, but longer but more interrupted sleeps. And finally, chamomile tea. Chamomile tea plus uh, three to five grams of collagen powder before bed um, will knock the shit right out of you. If all else fails, go see a psychoanalyst. See what's wrong. Why, why are you not sleeping? Why do you have insomnia? All right. And finally, I think we're getting to the end here. The political benefits of strength training. There are improved energy. Focus, mental clarity, and mood make for better organizing, agitating, criticizing, and theorizing. Forces you to organize your life in such a way that spontaneously generates pockets of time energy where none existed before. And the suffering, setbacks, lulls, progress, progress, and victories intrinsic to training, physical strength, builds character. It's useful to be strong and not to have to use it because it makes you formidable. And I think that you have to be formidable in order to move forward properly in the world. Just to get through obstacles. You have to have some strength of character. You have to have some commitment. And some of that is, there will be a cost if you interfere with me. It will be the minimal cost necessary. But do not be thinking there won't be a cost. And I don't think, I don't believe that if that's not built into your character, then you have, you have no strength. And you certainly have no strength when you're pushed by someone who's malevolent. Right? We got to be dangerous. You got to be able to be dangerous if necessary. It's useful to be. And finally, you will be hotter. So more people will listen to your bullshit and you'll get invited more places. And uh, I'll finish with Mark Ripito's quote that he leaves on all of his uh, gym walls. Strong people are harder to kill than weak people and more useful in general. And thank you. That is it. Ow. Good job. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can fix the screen here. You fucked it all up, but make... Okay, hold on. Let's see. Hold on, folks. Fixing the screen here. So, Nance, this is your second time seeing that too, right? Yeah. Anything new jump out at you this time? Or is there anything that you have been thinking about ever since you first heard it? That you're like, oh, yeah. I think... First of all, I love the way... It's like ironclad. Like, it is like there's there's no excuse like the only the only excuse is because either you're just not interested which is fine like that to be disinterested that's that's a choice okay cool 
but like there's no excuse like if if you can't get with this then you either don't care or you're a bitch like it, it is one or the other the the way it's presented and i love that and it forces me to confront um myself in this way of like yeah it, i it i want to want to care but also like i am a bitch about some of these things like like mm-hmm. i'm like i i want to bring up problems but like there's there just aren't any and 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 i love it like it it is inescapable um and i think that's excellent and if we want to strive for excellence then this is a great guiding fucking uh, principle. Hmm. I just, I, I absolutely love it. Thanks, Nance. Thank you. Yeah, I, I almost think that, well, I don't know, man. I, I've got a pretty big problem with it on the time energy side and it's because there is no such thing as this little pockets of time energy at least not in a meaningful sense and it's like okay so i have more energy and i do more than any meathead i've ever met in my life and i I, i'm able to do more than they do and It's because I get energy from the kinds of things that I do, like the goals that I make, the plans that I make, the challenges I I undertake. Those all give me insane amounts of energy. Like Nance and I, like we're we're reading, we're reading Capital, and like cover to cover, like all three volumes. This is stupid, stupid and absurd task. Like we're reading it aloud and talking about it as we go. Um, we've actually meant to invite you to that. It hasn't exactly started yet, but we're doing it. And the thing is, it's like, maybe, maybe we won't even get it done. Um, but the challenge itself is giving me so much energy that I've done all this secondary reading and listening that I wouldn't have done otherwise. And that's not coming from nutrition. It's not coming from the sun. It's not coming from supplements. It's not coming from steroids. It's definitely not coming from doing weights. It's not coming from any health and nutrition stuff. And that, that's not to say that I shouldn't be doing those things. I know I should be doing those things because I'm getting older. And as I get older, my joints are going to start going out and my brain will go get all foggy and shit. So I need to stay sharp. I need to stay strong. But the reason I've been able to get as far as I have without uh, a real fitness regimen is because I get tremendous amounts of energy from non- calorie based things and so there is a kind of idealism in there because it's like actually ideas give me energy you know so i mean that so So i would say i would say that that that's definitely true and can be true for lots of people they get energy from some uh from sources within their mind things that that excite them um but i i think the the point would be that um you uh if you took fitness and nutrition more seriously you would you would be even you'd find even more clarity and even more energy and you'd feel better in the mornings and you would uh you'd be less likely to have those burnout situations that sometimes happen um because your life would be a little bit more balanced um just because you had to organize it around um, fitness and eating um, and sleeping more. Yeah, that's that's exactly it, dude. Like that, because I I don't sleep very much, and I think the army kind of kind of ruined me a little bit, and I um, in in probably multiple ways. But I there also have been periods of time when I did eat better and I did sleep better. And I, I, I was better, just objectively better in every way. Like when you're, when you're actually in shape and your body is properly functioning, you are better. So there's, 
part of this just like determination and, and will can get you through a lot but you you're just fucking better when you're actually taking care of the vehicle that you're using to complete all these tasks yeah thinking of it like a vehicle is is a good it's a good metaphor i think right because you got you got to put fuel in that car every day um and that fuel is can be your interests can all but it's also yeah it's also the food it's also the sleep um and uh what you do actively to uh to keep it running so then i guess my big question is so at this point now that i've realized i can make the gym work with like i can hit the gym on my way home from work which means that i don't have to go on a special trip now that I know I can make that work, um, it seems like the hardest part's going to be the the diet because I hate thinking about food. I f- like I don't hate it half as much as Nance, but I hate it. And like when food, when I start thinking about food, it's because it's like some craving has suggested itself. And after the craving suggests itself, I just can't stop thinking about it. So now it's kind of getting in the way of what I want to be thinking about. And it's like, fuck, this is just, ugh, I'll just eat it. Right? Which means that like, the idea of the diet is that like, when those things are presenting themselves, I just have to push them off until they're in that 20, 23% or whatever. Um, so the, the idea is that uh, if you, I didn't mention it, but meal preparation, like yeah. meal prep on Sunday and you have yourself ready for the week, mostly like you're not going to prep all your meals, but that'll put you in a state where that, where the meals you are eating set you up to not have cravings. You slept enough, you, your hormones are regulated, you're getting, you've got all the micronutrients kind of set up ahead of time. So your body isn't like, oh, I'm missing vitamin, whatever. I'm going to start this craving process um, or I've had too much sugar. So I've got the, had the spike of insulin and it's put me on this kind of insulin roller coaster. So you know, I'm going to start a craving um, when you're, when you're working out and making use of those carbs and sugars in a better way. Uh, and you're eating filling foods like high protein, um, you know, your steaks or chickens or whatever, then again, those you won't, you won't have to worry about those cravings near as much. You won't have them. They will actually subside greatly after a week or two um and yeah i can't stand thinking about food as well i resent the grocery store i resent having to go there it makes me angry dude dude Um, yes yeah like i hate like oh my fucking bananas are brown now i gotta go back like you know it's like i just bought them it's uh it's it's annoying um so as if as wherever possible you know make your your lunches out ahead of time maybe you're in some of your breakfasts some are your like i i cook uh like a, a bunch of chicken breasts up ahead of time or a roast ahead of time so that throughout the week i can just reheat and uh, yeah. these things in the microwave and it's already laid out for me i make i make a like two cups of rice ahead of time that usually lasts a, a week or most of the week um so meal prep that'll take away a lot of this uh this need to fucking think about uh, food and while you're meal prepping, what can you do? Well, you can be listening to a podcast. You can be reading something in audiobook. Right, 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 right. And well, and the other thing is, is all, all these exegeticals I'm doing with Nance and a couple other people now, um, make it so that it's like we, we're taking turns reading and then, then we talk sometimes about what we're reading, but a lot of it is just the reading. And if we're taking turns, that means I can go check on something. I can go, it's like, I go wash the dishes or I make a meal, blah, blah, blah. And so anyway, I'm trying to get into this, this, this mindset, this grind. And so like, I went and got a couple, uh, roasts, um, but I'm going to cut them up and then put the asada seasoning in there and then slow cook it all. And then that's going to be like my tacos. But I'm also gonna add a bunch of broccoli to it. I know that's not Mexican; it's not properly Mexican. But it, but it's gonna be good. It'll still taste good. It'll still be healthy. So, um, but you just said uh, chicken breast or roast, and the thing is, is didn't you just 
say like chicken bad basically i did say that and the reason i have chicken is because i am not rich if i was rich i wouldn't <laughs> be eating much chicken at all i would be eating pretty much only red meat and i'd be eating salmon other fish eggs uh you know grass fed all of it organic i'm not right. rich i can't do that therefore i have to get my protein from you know less optimal sources still good sources but less optimal right these the, the stuff i laid out was just the optimal way to do shit um most of us aren't gonna be able to do that so chicken breast still good protein it's a little bit more inflammatory than red meat um it's a bit of a wasteland in terms of micronutrients whereas red meat has lots of good stuff iron and other uh, micronutrients um but yeah i i try it, basically for me i try to eat red meat once a day and then um and then chicken or eggs or tofu or protein shake the, for the rest of them. Or maybe a protein bar. I get protein bars too. So Den Denis in the chat said, I'm just trying to live, bro. Ain't nobody got time for all this. <laughs> I basically, I mean, but that is what your whole lecture is about is for the person who feels that way, right? Right. Yeah, the idea is that you will, you should feel like you, if you do this, if you, then you will have more energy and, and probably a little bit more time too, because you've organized, you've done the meal prepping, right? If you've done meal prepping ahead of time, you don't have to think about food the rest of the week. It's like basically cooked for you, mostly. You throw in the microwave. Um, you've actually saved yourself a little bit of time. And, um, yeah, and the workouts themselves plus the sleeping will, will make you the, the little bits of time you do have there'll be more energy with which you know you might not they might not be big enough to really engage in some serious projects but you will be in a better shape for those pockets of free time on the caffeine note mm -hmm. um it you know i think that i'm like most Americans, it's for its laxative effect. It's not for its energy effect. The energy effect is fake news. Most people don't get energy from coffee. That's lies. That's like fake news. That's like twenty year olds at Starbucks talking about how tired they are. That's not real though. Like it's really just about having regular and smooth bowel movements. I, I mean that. I mean, and the meme. The memes resemble resemble this. At, at this point, it's not a secret. Everybody knows it. Um, well, co co like coffee can actually cause constipation, and some people it'll it'll speed things up. But um, this diet and like uh, specific parts of it, uh, I don't know if it's the magnesium or the pota yeah potassium. Potassium in particular is the thing you need to up um, if you're not having movements. Like so, that's sweet potatoes. Uh, banana, um, avocado. There are some other foods. Maybe just potassium pills. You you could take you could put electrolyte powders or uh, in your water during the day, right? And keep yourself hydrated, and you'll be getting lots more potassium than your than your uh, you have been with your regular diet. And that that normally potassium alone uh, will will make things run smoothly. What about decaf coffee? Does it matter? Like, do I'm not you sure. Because I don't actually know that. I don't. I don't, I, I actually don't know if it's caffeine that actually makes coffee work that way. I don't. I have no idea. That's just like word on the street. I don't. And I, so I don't trust it. But um, because coffee doesn't seem it, to me, it's like I just like the the taste at this point. So I would just go for decaf. And I've had, I've been trying to just go for decaf. In fact. I mean, that would probably help. Yeah. Switching, like getting, losing the caffeine and going for just decaf if you like the taste. I'm sure that would, like, I don't think black coffee beans themselves are inherently all that bad. I think it's probably the caffeine that has the negative side. I mean, there's positive side effects to caffeine as well, but we should note, but um, relying on it for, for energy and for, for habit and drinking like four or five cups a day, uh, probably not great. Okay. And then I guess my final question is about this, the Reno Tahoe 
Odyssey, which is a relay race that we're doing. And when I say we, I mean um, me, uh, Anne, who's listening, by the way, she's catching up on the stream right now, and Nance. Um, so Anne did track like in high school. So like for her, this is a thing that she just did already. But for me, Nance, this is not. So basically what it is, is it's like 170 miles or something like that. It's, it's, uh, from Reno to Lake Tahoe around Lake Tahoe and then all the way back. And it's th the idea of the relay race. So like everyone takes turns five miles at a time and then you swap out and so it's you're supposed to have a team of like 12 people Anne's brother and sister are going to be in on it and right now we're still looking for other people who want to who might want to join our crew um so if you're feeling like you need a really good goal anybody in the audience like hit me up especially anybody who's already taking classes at theory underground if you're feeling like maybe having a big goal with other people on your horizon would help you stay on track with your smaller goals for regular fitness routines then get at us about that but my big question is so this three day a week workout 45 minutes a day how does the running best complement it uh so the the two like Training for strength and training it for endurance will can be done. It just means that you won't like you're gonna kind of lose on a little bit on each. Ultimately, if you're trying to do like you're not gonna be able to excel at uh, at either one. But um, strength training does help with um, endurance training um, to to an extent. I would personally do either cardio after your strength training bouts um, if you're going to train on the same day or I would put it on a different day um, they will interfere a little bit in the recovery for each other but it's not going to be disastrous especially if you're getting enough sleep um, and eating enough carbs and protein then um, yeah so don't just put the running every day in between the workout because that messes up the repair. No, you could do that. You could do that. Oh, you could. Again, no matter what you do, the repair will be like the recovery will be impeded a little bit. Like there's no way like it's going to be impaired uh, in one way or another if you're going to come if you're going to do both. But it will be that you can you can minimize the the uh, lack of recovery by just making sure you sleep good and and eat properly um, but yeah no you can do it it can be done you can do it on the other you can do it on opposite days you could do it on the same day and uh, as long as it's after the strength part um, mm. and then may yeah you could do a little bit on weekends probably as well Okay. Yeah, probably three three days three days training uh, cardio three days training. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of working out. Uh, if you can do it, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, three days uh, three days a week cardio, three days a week strength. You could do them on the same day. You're just gonna have to eat extra for that to uh, to uh, make up for that. Anything else? Anything else that anybody wants to ask here before we close out or anything you want to ask us? Um, hmm. What, what is your, uh, let's say, what is your biggest, what do you, what do you see as the biggest potential roadblocks to you achieving, getting where you want to be fitness wise and health wise? It's that my whole everything about everything that I do um, is that I found a way to t 
turn burning out into a net positive, right? Like, so it's like, I go really hard on this and then I burn out and then I go, then I go really hard on this and then I burn out. And I usually like cycle through these things in a way where they kind of stack up in a way that's not pure self undermining, but there's some, there's some result that's positive. Like I'm not, so it's like, it's a mess, but I found a way to structure it just enough that it works out. And so it's like, it, it feels like on the one side, well, it's just going to be like all other things. I start it and then I fall off. Um, mm -hmm. And on the other, which is part of why I'm doing this, right? Like part of why I'm doing this publicly with you. Like we've had these conversations before and then I fell off. I'm hoping that doing this, like there's more accountability involved because it's like, and, 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 and I also hope that that will help other people too. go, oh shit. Like they're not just a bunch of meatheads. Dave is a flabby theory dork. Um, like the point is, is like showing that you're failing and, 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 and that there is effort and, and that there is growth. Um, and then using this attention economy thing to ultimately be good for me, right? Like using the fact that I need it somehow to incorporate some kind of like accountability for my body, right? Like, cause I think it's body's the first thing I forget about always. You know, it's always the first thing I forget about. So yeah, that's my big. Right. And eventually like it may be working out for you now, but eventually at a certain point that's going to bite you. Yeah. Whether it's when you're older or yeah, you, you, you get to uh, malnourished, whatever it is. What about you, Nance? Biggest obstacle. I think for me, realistically, uh, the nutrition will be the hardest part because I, I mean, for the last 15 years, for the most part, I just eat one meal a day. I eat a large dinner. <laughs> um, I've never had time for breakfast. I rarely have time for lunch and it, like I just somehow wrecked my metabolism to the point where uh, like I can legit just not eat for probably a couple of days before I start to like become cognizant of it. Um, like I just, I hate food. I hate, I hate preparing food. I hate shopping for food. I really don't enjoy eating food all that much. Like food is just like it. And I think, I think it came from like scarcity initially. Like I didn't have it. And so I like found a way to be okay with not having it. Um, and now, uh, yeah, I just like it. I know that's where I'm going to struggle the most. And then sleeping is probably going to be this, the second hardest part. Um, but again, like it, it comes down to like, I do want it. And so it's just a matter of holding myself accountable. Um, and not being a bitch. Bless you. <laughs> you broke not, your... not being a bitch is a very important part of, of this whole process. You broke your camera. Like you sneeze so hard. That's right. I guess I'd just say like to Dennis, um, or Denise or Denise. Denis, I guess we don't know what language it is in, right? Because if it's Spanish, it's Denise. If it's, are you saying if it's French, it'd be Denis? No, if it was, that I don't. Know. Let's call him Dan. Hey Dan, if you're listening, Den. Let's call him Denny, like the restaurant. Denny, Denny's. All right, so Denny's in the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess you're you're saying I just want to live. Or no, sorry, you don't. You don't even say you want to. You just you're just trying to live, and so on the one side that speaks to like I'm guessing uh, like you're trying to make ends meet. You got a lot of responsibilities. Uh, they keep you super busy. You don't have time energy. So trying to live, you're trying to keep your head above water. This is like some. This is this would be so much extra 
you're not going to be able to do that, right? Um, and so that's how I always feel. Um, but I guess it's being 35 and thinking about like wanting to set myself up so that all the effort I put into philosophy is not wasted in my golden years. Because like intellectually, your mind can just get sharper and sharper and more fertile and fertile. You know, like the, you, as you cultivate it, you're setting yourself up for, I mean, the golden years go far beyond your physical peak. Um, but to at some point, if the body's just atrophying, it's going to have an effect on the mind. And then all of that mental cultivation you've done to see that all wasted is just sad. And so it's like, I'm also just trying to live, but trying to live means for me not wasting my life and not letting the people who want to see me fail win, not letting capital win, not letting all my time energy get turned into labor power. Like I want that for everybody, but I got to start with me and nobody cares. Like nobody cares. The whole society doesn't give a shit. Like nobody gives a fuck. You just have to do it for yourself. No one else is going to be able to do it for you. And there's nothing you can buy that will do it for you either. That's why people go spend a bunch of money on all these supplements is because they're trying to let consumerism do the work for them. But it's like at the end of the day, you just got to get in a routine and getting in a routine is the hardest thing in the world. Now it is. But that's why I'm trying to see what's the best bang for my buck expenditure I can do that I can actually link up with my work schedule because I can't choose to not work. And so linking up my fitness schedule with my, or regimen with my actual work schedule, I figure is like the magic key because in the past it was always like, oh, oh, this time of day I'll go work out and then I get my things and then go. I, I, I was never like incorporating it into like being on the way. And so, and, and, and it has to be right after work because I don't have time. I need big blocks of time to be able to do any of the things that I care about. You can't just read capital in a half hour per day. Like you actually have to have huge blocks of time. Um, and, and, and just putting, putting a workout in the middle of a, of what would otherwise be a big block of time breaks it. Now it's worthless. Now it's just like, oh, an hour here and an hour there on the two sides of the workout. That's not going to do. That's not going to cut it. But uh, I don't know. It's a work in progress. We'll see what happens. I think I'll just finish with, uh, I, I got to leave in a couple minutes. I have my uh, appointment with my analyst, the Canadian analyst. No way. Uh, coming up. Yeah. We've, we've been going for uh, a little over a month, I think now. Sweet. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, but I'll finish with a little story about my dad. He was, uh, he was always very active. Um, and his main things were, uh, hockey and just jogging. He loved to, he loved to jog. He was kind of more of an endurance guy himself. Um, and that's, but that's how he stayed active. And when he, his knee, the cartilage in his knee, his knee, his, his knee just degraded to the point where he couldn't do it anymore. He had to stop running. He had to stop hockey. And basically the moment he did that within like a year, the, the decline in his mental state was very noticeable. Like he, he was uh slower. He wasn't picking up on things. Um, you know, driving with him was always, it was getting scary. Um, and studies bore, bear that out. If you want to prevent Alzheimer's, well, if you want to slow down Alzheimer's, your greatest asset is keeping yourself active, getting your heart rate up every once in a while regularly. Um, and, you know, strength, I think, is the best way to do that, um, it, it, especially for it prevents frailty and fragility. If you if you slip and fall and uh, break your hip at, uh, you know, age 75 or 80 or something, you are have a very high likelihood of dying within the next six months just from a fall, a hip, a hip injury, breaking your hip. Um, if you have surgery and you're not already robust and strong and resilient, you are you're going to your recovery is going to be crap. I just had a, a client uh, 
strength training with me who was pregnant. She was lifting heavy up until a couple of weeks before her pregnancy. She said pregnancy itself for her was one of the easiest things she's she's been through. Like like she was expecting much worse. Her because her body was in shape, like she I think her labor was like half an hour apparently. Like something ridiculous. We're going to make a little video about it. But yeah. You want a slow decline, you're going to decline. Um keep yourself fit. You're going to get old at some point. Your body's not going to be able to just rely on your energy and your interests uh, forever. So, yeah, do the shit, get strong, put some time in the gym, um, and the rest of your life will will benefit from it. Thank you so much for coming back on the channel. So it's always an honor to have you, man. Um, glad we have this up now. And I guess the last thing we'll say about this is that it's an ongoing event folks um just as a thing theory underground is doing look into the hub events it's a way that you can get involved and yeah we have a weekly conversation going forward here that is dedicated to whipping ourselves into shape staying accountable being healthy thanks so much guys peace